Good evening, members and guests, and welcome to our Planning Your Retirement webinar. My name's Beck Harvey, and I'm the manager of key member services here at Brighter Super. And with me today is retirement advocate, David Koch, also known as Koshy. G'day, Beck. how are you? Great. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me tonight. I'm looking forward to chatting to you and listening to Beck, and then I'm going to uh, do a short presentation on um, how to get good advice in terms of your retirement and because there's a lot of resources around that you need to tap into and then I reckon the best part of webinars <laughs> like this is a question and answer section so if you've got a question send them through Beck and I have got plenty of time to answer it I can't wait later. can't fun. wait <laughs> <laughs> thanks Koshi uh, tonight we're going to be discussing a range of topics including how much you may need to retire a different way and different ways to grow your super and how to put a plan in place to achieve your goals. If you'd like to ask questions throughout tonight's presentation, please click on the live Q&A tab located on the right hand side of the webinar screen. We'll endeavour to get through as many questions as possible, but if we can't get to your question, we will come back to you in the coming days. Before I start today's briefing, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners on the lands on which we are meeting and pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. We acknowledge and celebrate the continuation of a living culture that has a unique role in this region. I'd like to also advise that the information we're presenting is general information only. It's been prepared without taking into account your individual objectives, financial situation or needs. You must not rely on the information alone as a sole or primary source of advice or guidance for the purpose of making decisions about your superannuation options. Feel free to write down notes as you go tonight, but the recording will also be made available to you within the next week. If you want to be contacted, you'll have the opportunity to leave your details on the feedback form, which will appear at the end of the webinar. You can also download our reference guide which may be helpful to you. You can find it under the handouts tab on the right hand side of this webinar page. We have a few of our members guests joining us tonight. So I wanted to take a moment to introduce Brighter Super. Brighter Super is a 100% member owned Queensland based superannuation fund that has been supporting our members for over 59 years. It's built on the foundation of the merger of three Queensland based funds, LGIA Super, Energy Super, and Suncorp superannuation business. We are an open fund that welcomes members from our foundation industries of government, finance, electrical and energy sectors, along with the wider community. As a fund, we're making a genuine effort to deliver on our objectives. Lowering fees with our MySuper option in the top three industry funds nationally for lowest fees. Improving investment returns and we have Queensland's best performing My Super, annual, Super option for an industry fund. And simplifying our products and enhancing our education and advice services for our members. Tonight's seminar, we think is a great example of this. So let's dive into our Planning Your Brighter Retirement seminar to help you prepare for your retirement. The purpose of tonight's presentation will be focused on three key areas. The definition of a comfortable retirement and the funds you might need. Then how to build your super for retirement. And then how you can access an income in retirement. The information we are covering tonight is general in nature and takes a high level look at retirement planning. There will be a lot of information covered, so please write down what is valuable for you. As always, take the opportunity to seek further guidance from a financial advisor who can consider your own personal circumstances. It's never too early to start thinking about your future retirement lifestyle. When I talk to members, most people tell me they wanna have a comfortable lifestyle. So take a moment to think about what your comfortable lifestyle may look like. It might be the big overseas trip or exploring our own beautiful backyard. For others, it's all about family and friends spending time with loved ones or grandparent duties keep a lot of people busy. We're all different and we will all have a variety of ideas as to what our comfortable looks like. 
Once you've got an idea as to what your future lifestyle looks like, you need to think about how much money you'll need to maintain it. The Association of, of Super Funds of Australia, ASFA, regularly surveys retirees who are over the age of 65 and have paid off their mortgage and asks them what are they spending their money on. I actually recommend you write this one down. ASFA, Retirement Standard, and Google it a bit later. They've got a great detailed budget breakdown for those of you who want more detail. Now from that research, they've identified two types of lifestyle in retirement, modest and comfortable. For retirees living a modest lifestyle, it's probably going to be fairly conservative. Based on ASFA's research, they've defined a modest lifestyle, which includes takeaway and occasional cheap restaurant meals, infrequent domestic short breaks, basic private health insurance, and owning a cheaper or basic car. It's unlikely there'd be money to travel overseas and social activities would be a little closer to home. So what does a comfortable lifestyle look like? For most members that I assist, they're looking forward to a lifestyle with a few more options. So based on ASSA's research, they've defined a comfortable lifestyle, which includes domestic, and occasional overseas travel, social activities including the occasional restaurant meal, maintaining a vehicle and home, and mid-level private medical insurance. We suggest that now's a great time to review your budget, and if you don't have one, an even better time to develop one. This is going to help ensure you understand your expenses as you work towards retirement. So let's have a look at how that translates to an overall balance. The figures on your screen represent how much you may need to fund your retirement. You'll find these figures in the reference guide, which again you can find under the handouts tab. Figures were calculated in December of 2023 and they assumed a 2.5% inflation rate. If the actual inflation rate exceeds this amount, these figures may understate the amount required to maintain a certain lifestyle during retirement. These figures also include some age pension considerations. It is also important to note that the figures on the screen are based on a retirement age of 60. Your planned retirement age may be different to this, and we encourage you to get advice to ensure we take into account your own personal circumstances. I'd also encourage you to take the time to read through the reference guide to see how you're tracking towards your comfortable retirement. One of the great tools we have available to you is our Retirement Income Calculator. I encourage you to head to our website and you'll find this calculator under the Resources tab. It's a great tool to start getting an idea of the income you may be able to generate and explore how small changes can make a positive difference in retirement. If you'd like to speak to an advisor about your personal circumstances and to determine if you're on track, we offer a Retirement Health Check. These appointments are held with one of our financial advisors and cost $330. I'll cover this in more detail a little later on. So let's discuss how contributions can also impact your superannuation balance. There's two types of super contributions, concessional and non-concessional cont contributions. These include, or the concessional contributions include, employer contributions, salary sacrifice that can be mandated or voluntary, and tax deductible personal contributions. The concessional contribution limit for the current financial year is $27,500. If you do exceed the cap, excess contributions can be taxed at your marginal tax rate. Then non-concessional, also known as after-tax contributions. This means that tax has already been deducted prior to entry to super. Under the current rules, you could potentially contribute up to $110,000 per financial year. Under the age of 75, you may also be able to bring forward up to $330,000, which is three years of contributions. Now, it does depend on your total super balance. These contributions can be made up to the age of 75, even if you're not working. It's important to note that these contribution caps are increasing 
next financial year, so the financial year 24-25. The concessional contribution cap will be increasing to $30,000. And the non-concessional contribution cap will be $120,000, increasing the bring forward rule to a total of $360,000. There could be other factors, so you may wish to consider our intra-fund advice, which is at no additional cost to our members and can help you plan an effective contribution strategy. So if this is of interest to you, make a note now to get in contact with our intra-fund advice team. So generally speaking, one of the most tax effective ways to make a, a contribution is via salary sacrifice. When you salary sacrifice funds, your employer sends the contribution to your super fund before they calculate how much tax you have to pay. This means you may be able to reduce your taxable income by making before tax contributions. If you're earning between 45,000 and 120,000, your overall marginal tax rate will be 32.5%, plus the Medicare levy of 2% if applicable. Now, if you're earning over 120,000, your tax rate may be even higher. So let's apply this to super contributions. Salary sacrifice contributions are taxed at 15% versus the income that would have been taxed at the higher tax rate. It allows you to send money that would normally be paid as tax into super. If you're earning under 45,000 or over 250,000, a different tax rate may apply to those contributions. It's important to note that if your combined income and concessional contributions exceed $250,000, you may need to pay an additional tax on your superannuation contributions. So now's a great time to point out our salary sacrificing calculator, which you can find under the resources tab on our website. I encourage you to write that one down so you can explore this later. Now let's have a look at an example of this. In this example, a member has $5,000 they can afford to contribute to their super. They earn between $45,000 and $120,000. In option one, the member decides to contribute as an after-tax contribution. In this instance, the tax paid would be $1,725, which is calculated at the marginal tax rate. In option two, if their employer allows them to salary sacrifice, the tax paid would be at the concessional rate of 15%, which is $750, and that would be around $975 in tax saved. So that's money you've saved in tax. It can potentially be a great way to grow your retirement savings while saving on tax. You then have the option to put this tax saving back into your super helping you further grow your retirement balance. Let's have a look at how different ways of contributing may impact on a member's retirement balance. So I'm gonna introduce Tina, a hypothetical Brighter Super member. Her situation may have similarities to yours, but we have not considered anyone's personal circumstances in this scenario. Tina's recently turned 55 and is in a position to make extra contributions to a super. Tina's current super balance is $200,000. She's looking at putting an extra $5,000 per year into her super via salary sacrifice. In option A, if Tina chooses not to contribute, she may retire with a balance of just over $257,000. However, in option B, if Tina contributes $5,000 per $5,000 per year for five years, she could potentially grow her super to just over $279,500, which includes savings of around $5,000 in tax along the way. So based on the assumptions and considering Tina's circumstances, she may be able to save money in tax and boost her super balance by contributing via salary sacrifice to her super. So as you can see, small changes over a period of time can make a big difference. Depending on your personal circumstances, there may be other contribution options available. These include spouse contribution, bring forward, downsizer, government co-contribution, 
carry forward contributions and the low income tax offset. Like anything, rules and eligibility criteria apply, so for more information, please reach out to us. A popular contribution we talk about is the downsizer contribution. If you're 55 and over and selling your home, you may be able to put part of the proceeds into your super, which is in addition to your non-concessional contribution cap. Reminder that the non-concessional contribution cap is currently $110,000. The limit for the downsizer contribution is currently $300,000 per person. There's no need to be working to make the contribution and we encourage you to speak with us if you are considering this type of contribution, as other eligibility criteria does apply. There's also helpful information on our website and the ATO website. If you'd like to learn more about contributions, we regularly run a Super 101 webinar. And in fact, we ran this webinar today at lunch. So I encourage you to regularly check our website as a new date will be announced soon. <clears throat> so when I'm talking to members, the number one question I get asked is, when can I retire? Well, the good news is that you can finish work whenever you choose. However, you need to know if you're able to fund your retirement. When it comes to accessing your super, it starts with your date of birth. The first rule when it comes to accessing your super is that you must reach what is known as your preservation age. As you can see from the table, this can be, between, can be between the ages of 55 to 60. So take a moment now to identify your preservation age. The interesting thing about the age of 60 is that any funds you access from your super are tax free. You don't pay any tax on it, and it's not considered taxable income. So reaching your preservation age is one requirement. The other requirement is that you meet a condition of release. Conditions of release include permanent retirement and you don't intend to return to work in the future. You cease an employment arrangement after the age of 60. This means you don't need to declare permanent retirement, you just need to cease a work arrangement. Or turn 65, happy birthday. Your 65th birthday, you've got full access to your super, regardless if you're working or not. And then transition to retirement pension accounts, also known as TTR. Once you've reached your preservation age, but have not yet met the other conditions of release, you also have the option of setting up a TTR account. I'm going to go through this a little bit more in a moment. There are some other conditions released before your preservation age, generally though in relation to ill health and also severe financial hardship. But the above conditions that I've just spoken about are the main ways in which you can access your super. If you are a defined benefit account member, the conditions of release are slightly different. So please touch base with the fund before you need to access your money. So I just mentioned transition retirement pension accounts. Put simply, a TTR account is a way for people to access funds once, once they've reached their preservation age, but haven't met the other condition of release. You may also hear this um, called a transition to retirement income stream or a TRIS. It provides a way for a person to potentially access up to 10% of their balance in a financial year. So why would people use a TTR account? Let's go through a few common reasons why someone would commence a TTR. Firstly, they might want to work less. A TTR account could help you to cut back on your work hours or take a lower paying job. You can receive regular pension payments to supplement the income you have lost by working less. Or potentially you might want to reduce some debt. By receiving additional income from a TTR without changing jobs or increasing your work hours. Then you may want to reduce tax and increase your super contributions. You may look at increasing your contributions to super and make up the reduction in take home pay with tax free income from a TTR account. And estate planning. A TTR can assist with future estate planning needs. But remember, 
By accessing your super prior to retirement, you need to consider the impact on your future retirement lifestyle. We do recommend talking to one of our financial advisors to ensure, this is, to ensure if this is right for you. We have a specific advice service called Scaled Advice that covers TTR. If this is of interest to you, we recommend you to write that one down and we'll come back to it later. So let's have a look at how you set up a TTR account. When you start a transition to retirement account, your money stays within super. You can move all or some of your funds from your accumulation account into a TTR pension account. You need a minimum of 50,000 to start a brighter super TTR pension. You may need to keep your accumulation account open for your employer contributions and, for example, if you have insurance. You are required to leave a minimum of $8,000 in your accumulation account. You can also choose from a suite of investment options ranging from lower to higher risk. There are single asset classes as well as diversified investment options. The maximum amount you can take out from your TTR account per year is 10%, with the minimum being 4%. The percentage is calculated on the amount you move across to open the TTR account. This percentage is then recalculated on the 1st of July each year. Payments, they can be made fortnightly, monthly, quarterly, semi-annually or annually, based on your needs. Now for those defined benefit members, it is a little bit more complex, so we encourage you to reach out to us if you would like some more information. So let's have a look at our TTR, income, uh, TTR pension account may work for a member. So here's a quick case study on what a TTR can look like. Shane's 60 and he's been working for around 38 years and he's looking to ease his way into retirement. He's spoken to his employer and is, on, and is planning on reducing his working hours to three days per week. Now he does need to maintain a similar level of income that he's currently receiving. In option A, if Shane does not commence a TTR and continues to work full time, he receives $70,000 a year before tax. In option B, after receiving some scaled personal advice, he decides to transfer $180,000 into a TTR pension account and elects to draw down the maximum 10% and, paid as, and have that paid as a fortnightly income. He now receives a gross income of $42,000 annually from his employer, along with an additional $18,000 tax-free from his super. So generally speaking, Shane would be able to maintain a similar level of income while also being able to reduce his working hours. Remember, everyone's situation is different, so do seek further advice as to what is right for you. If a TTR pension account is of interest to you, our scaled advice services may be able to assist. If you're looking for more information on our TTR and pension products, please visit our website. Again, under the Resources tab, you'll find a section on Forms and Info Sheets, where there's more information on both TTR and pension accounts, along with our Considering Retirement Info Sheet. You may find other useful documents here too, like our Product Disclosure Statement. We also have a dedicated webinar on TTR, which takes place regularly. Please visit our seminar page for more information. For many people, super is going to be the second most significant investment after the family home. The importance of super doesn't just stop because you finish work. The good news is you can continue to use your superannuation as an investment and income vehicle once you've stopped working. You've got the option to choose how and when you access your money. It's important to know there's no requirement to draw down or access your funds. You can leave it in super. You're not forced to access your super if you don't need to. That being said, the purpose of super is to provide income in retirement, and that is what most people use their super for. There are two account options when considering moving into retirement. Firstly, you can retain your current accumulation account. You've got the same investment options to choose from, and you can make withdrawals and also contribute subject to contribution rules. 
any withdrawals after the age of 60 are tax free. However, investment earnings can be taxed up to 15%. The fund withholds any tax payable before returns are added to your account. The second account is called a pension account. Upon meeting a condition of release, you can draw income from a pension account. A superannuation pension account is different to a Centrelink pension. A minimum, a minimum withdrawal is required over the year, which is based on your age, and there is no maximum. You're also able to withdraw a lump sum amount if needed, and investment earnings are tax-free. You can choose one account or a combination of both to suit your retirement needs. For many members, a superannuation pension account is a convenient and tax effective way to access their super. So how do you set up a pension account? Firstly, step one, decide how much you want to open your account with. There is a minimum amount of $50,000 required to set up your pension. Step two, Choose how you want to invest your pension account. Your super is still invested when it's in a pension account. You can change your investment strategy at any time and there are multiple investment options available. Step three, nominate the amount you wish to receive annually. You can change this amount throughout the year as needed, so long as it meets or exceeds the minimum drawdown amount. The annual minimum is recalculated each year on the 1st of July. And step four, select the frequency of your payments. These range from fortnightly to once per year. You can also withdraw lump sum amounts as needed. However, these don't count towards the minimum drawdown requirement. On the previous slide, I mentioned you had to withdraw a minimum amount each year, and this increases over time as you age. The minimum depends on your age, as you can see on the slide. So for example, if a member was to establish a pension account at the start of a financial year with $100,000 at the age of 63, they must withdraw at least 4% or $4,000 in that financial year. Again, this amount will be recalculated at the beginning of each financial year based on the balance in your account. Just want to talk about the retirement ward. This is a potential reward for eligible members who hold a Brighter Super Accumulation or TTR account, and they open a Brighter Super Pension account. Basically, it's a dollar reward that gives you a portion of the tax we've set aside to pay the Australian Taxation Office, or the ATO, when growth assets like shares are sold. But when a Brighter Super member takes those growth assets from their Accumulation or TTR account, which are taxed, into a brighter super pension account, which is not taxed, then no tax is paid when and if those assets are sold at a profit. This unpaid tax is then available as a reward for retiring with us. We call it the retirement reward. This reward is paid into your pension account. The amount of the reward will depend on a number of things. And it's important to know there may be times when there is no reward. Now to get more information and an example on the reward and how that's calculated, please refer to our website. For some, superannuation may not be quite enough to fund their comfortable lifestyle. This is where the age pension may come in. Eligibility for the government age pension requires you to meet three tests, the age test, the assets test and the income test. I'm not going to go into too much detail tonight about Centrelink, but you will find some relevant information, such as the thresholds for these tests, in the reference guide. And you can also go to Centrelink's website. But there are some other considerations. Another option in retirement is concession cards. These can make a big difference by giving you discounts on many everyday expenses. One type of concession card is linked to the age pension. It may help with the cost of healthcare, medicines, and some other costs. If you're not eligible for the age pension concession card, there may be other concession cards available. For more information, we encourage you to speak with Centrelink or a brighter super financial advisor. Maximising your potential Centrelink benefits can be covered as part of your financial advice. 
let's have a quick look at what else you may need to know. As part of your overall financial plan, it's important to also think about your estate planning needs. You can instruct your super fund as to who your money goes to in the event of your passing. Super funds can generally only pay to a dependent or your estate. Dependents are a spouse, child or children, financial dependent or someone in an interdependent relationship. And there are several types of beneficiary nominations. Firstly, we have the preferred nomination. This is not legally binding, but a guide as to how you would like your benefit distributed in the event of your death. This can be completed online and does not expire. Then we have binding. This legally binds Brighter Super to pay your death benefit to your nominated beneficiary or beneficiaries. This requires a specific form to be completed and must be valid at the time of your passing. You have the option of a binding lapsing or a binding non-lapsing nomination. A lapsing nomination is valid for a maximum of three years and we will notify you prior to its expiry. A non-lapsing does not need to be renewed but is important to review regularly to ensure your nomination remains valid. Both nominations have different rules applicable. Then we have reversionary. This only applies to our pension accounts and will allow the pension payments to continue to be paid and directed to your beneficiary, which is generally your spouse. We do understand this can be a complex issue and we have a dedicated beneficiaries webinar, which also takes place regularly, with the next one next week on the 23rd of April. Again, please visit our seminar page for more information. Brighter Super offers a range of advice options suited to individual members' needs. If you have more questions about your super, you can book in for a super health check. This is at no additional cost as it's included in your membership. If you're looking for specific advice about making contributions or investment strategies relating to your Brighter Super account, our Intrafund advice team can help. These appointments are also at no additional cost. After the appointment, you'll receive a written statement of advice summarising the recommendations. As we discussed earlier, we also offer several paid retirement financial advice options. If you're wondering whether you're on track or how long your funds may last, a retirement health check may help answer these questions. This service costs $330 and may provide peace of mind when you need it most. We also have our scaled advice. This helps members retire with Brighter Super and covers particular topics such as implementing a pension or a TTR account effectively, including choosing the right investment option for you. Our advisors can also assess potential Centrelink benefits. This service costs $990. We do also offer a comprehensive advice service should you have more complicated needs, such as investments outside of super. It's available for members and their partners as a, as a household. It also includes implementation of the advice and the cost is going to depend on the complexity of that advice. In some cases, advice costs related to retirement and superannuation can be deducted from your brighter super account. So take a moment to take a moment to write down which advice option may be right for you and reach out to us for further information. I'm now going to hand over to Koshi to give you some helpful information on the value of help for your retirement. Oh my goodness. Beck, I'm intimidated. All of that <laughs> great information that you've shared there. So many fantastic tips. Thank you for that. Don't forget, if you've got any questions, about um, Beck's presentation then, or you want any more clarification, send it through um, in the questions in the Q&A box that you've got on your screen there, and uh, I can put them to Beck coming up. But so many great points there. I was speaking at a, a conference in Western Victoria last week, and I pinched some of <laughs> Beck's material, particularly <laughs> your um, uh, for downsizers over 55s. I reckon that is just a little gem that very few people know about. If you downsize, you can put that profit, uh, profit to your superannuation. It's a beauty. Um, so don't forget, 
question and answers coming up very shortly. So uh, start sending them through now. Um, my little bit that I'm going just before we get on to question and answers is to have a look at the value of help for your retirement. But uh, before we do that, a bit of an update on what I'm doing since I since I left my hobby at, uh, at Sunrise, which is sort of a hobby that got out of control. But after 21 years of getting up quarter past three in the morning, Libby and I thought we needed a bit more flexibility in our life. But I'm still um, involved in my family businesses. I've had for my family businesses for 30 years and includes Pinstripe Media uh, and the Ausbiz um, Streaming Network. I'm still the chairman of Port Adelaide. I've taken on the role of economic director of Compare the Market as well, the comparison platform, uh, which Lib and I have used for um, oh, about 10 or 15 years for our, our own bills as we, uh, as we try and get the best deals on everything that's available to us. So that's, uh, that's keeping me a bit out of trouble at the moment. Um, but Brighter has also asked me to... Um, contribute to the financial education of retirees. Like I'm one up at the moment in my late 60s. I know what exactly you're going through. And I've always been passionate about financial education and retirement. So you're going to see me popping up at member events to give you a give you my view on a lot of the big issues that you might be facing in retirement, uh, not only now and into the future as well. So I'm really looking forward to that as we, as we go forward. But why am I so passionate about retirement education? A couple of things. Um, I get scared about people's superannuation planning uh, because for most Australians, it's now behind their house becoming their, their biggest asset. And fun, your retirement should be a time where you enjoy life. That you, you don't need to skimp and scrape. You've worked hard all of your working life and retirement is a time to really get the, the biggest bang for your buck, a great benefit in terms of lifestyle. But a few things worry me about that, about people's approach to retirement. Um, the myth that the superannuation guarantee levy is going to fund a retirement lifestyle. It may, but it may not fund the correct lifestyle that you want and that you're aiming for. Um, that's why going to some of the retirement ca calculators, there's one on the, on the Brighter website, is a great way of sort of matching what you see as your best retirement against what you need to retire on in terms of superannuation. And you'll find if you've just been contributing the compulsory superannuation, um, Levy will then, it's simply not going to be enough. The other big mistake that concerns me with people planning for retirement is that they leave it too late. Um, the Australian Bureau of Statistics did did a, a great survey last year on the expectations that people have for retirement. And all Australians, most Australians, um, set a date of just over 65 years of age, 65 and a half years of age, to be precise, that people are planning for their retirement. And that's terrific. But the issue is that you have this date fixated in your mind and up until about 10 years before getting to that date, people tend to sit back and um, are pretty relaxed about it and say, oh, you know, superannuation's not, not a big deal for me. Um, I've still got 15 years or 10 years to retirement. In the last 10 years, I'll really start to stack the cash away and get up to that level that I need to retire on. But the reality is only 30% of Australians retire when they had planned to. So if the average age that Australians think they're going to retire at, 65 and a half years of age, only 30% actually have the luxury of retiring at that time. 70% of Australians have their retirement decision made for them earlier than the, the date that they plan to retire on. Now, that could be because of retrenchment. 37% um, of, of that 70% that uh, don't retire when they plan, um, um, it's cut short because of illness to themselves. 
and 15% because of illness to a partner that they need to look after or an injury that they've received. Now, I suppose the moral of my story, in no, and they're the facts, they're the statistics, is that you can't leave it too late and you can't depend on retiring on the day that you plan because in most instances it isn't or you're not able to, it's brought forward and of course that affects the amount that you're going to retire on and obviously um, the retirement lifestyle that you're going to leave during what, you should, what should be the best time of your life. You may need to cut corners. That's why people like Beck and her presentation really reinforce a strategy. The earlier you start adopting those strategies, um, the better the safety net that is under you if you don't retire when planned. And I think that's really important to understand. So invest in you and think about it. You have to know more. You've got to take an interest in your superannuation almost right from the very start. And that means updating what you know more often. It is taking advantage of, of the material that Brighter sends out to members and understanding what it is and following it because it will help you control your financial future in retirement. It's just so important. Financial security starts with you and your mindset. And um, a wise old investment planner once said to me that yes, you can delegate responsibility for your financial well-being, but you can never surrender it. You surrender it at your own peril. And that's why taking advantage of the advice that is on offer to you and getting regular retirement financial health checks and talking to advisors and plan it and, and making sure you have a blueprint is just so important. But you've got to want to do it. You've got to drive it. So don't leave it to somebody else. Take advantage of the resources that are around you. And look, it can start, the very first start um, step can be challenging your own processes, your own saving and investment investing habits. Right? What do you do? in terms of managing your money now, pre-retirement, and managing your money post-retirement. What, what are the habits that you've adopted, the processes, um, the, the process of saving and investing and getting more knowledge? Because knowledge is power, and that power leads to seeking advice, and that power delivers advice that is targeted for you. So I think it's really important. You've got to take responsibility for it and follow it through and you've got to drive it. So what are sort of seven habits that I live by, I've always lived by, and I've got to admit my, my wife Libby, she looks after and has always looked after our household finances. She's done the budgets. She's uh, done all the comparisons and the insurance. Makes her, I do the investing, Lib. Uh, controls the family budget. And I think that that is a fair division of responsibility that also gives Lib financial security in understanding um, exactly where every dollar is coming from and where every dollar is going to. I think that's important for the financial well-being of a couple. So a couple of the, the habits that <laughs> Lib's mainly instilled these in me in terms of day-to-day -day money habits is, of course, never pay retail, always negotiate on everything you buy, particularly big ticket items. Uh, we've got a son-in-law in the car industry, and he regularly says to us, every salesperson in the car industry has an ambit amount that, that they're told that they can discount a vehicle on because they know most people will negotiate big ticket items. And he said, we're just expecting it. We, we build that into the sales process. It's just part of what we do. And when someone doesn't negotiate a price, uh, we think as a, a car salesperson, you beauty, that goes <laughs> straight to our bottom line. So, you know, don't be embarrassed. I often get a bit, bit embarrassed in negotiating at, at shops and big ticket items. Lib had no qualms whatsoever. 
but most businesses um, build that in to what they're expecting. Um, also, target debt um, and understand the difference between good and bad debt. Uh, good debt is debt that you have on appreciating assets and investments. Uh, bad debt is high interest uh, consumer credit, like outstanding balances on credit cards and, and personal loans. Um, we, we have this weird thing as human beings. Often we like to see the balance of our transaction accounts or savings accounts rise all the time, um, when in fact we've got outstanding balances on credit cards that we might be paying uh, 15 to 20% interest on, but we're only earning 3 4 5% on a term deposit or, or a savings account. Um, if you've got an outstanding balance on your credit card, you should have no savings. It's as simple as that. It's just simple maths to work out you're better off with your own money to actually pay down high interest debt than put your money in low interest savings accounts. Uh, be de more, more demanding of your bank as well. Um, there's uh, banks treat loyal customers badly compared to new customers. It's called, uh, for example, in the home loan market, it's called front and back book rates. A back book rate is an interest rate that's charged to, uh, on home loans to loyal long-term customers. A front book rate is um, an interest rate that's charged to attract a new customer. Sometimes the difference between the two can be one and a half percent. So if you've been a loyal customer with a bank for a long time and never asked for a discount on a home loan, um, if you've still got a home loan or pass this on to your, to your adult kids if they, they're on a home loan, you should be checking back with the bank each year to make sure that you've got the best rate and asking for a discount. Never automatically renew anything any bill, any insurance bill, any uh, insurance policy or energy bill, um, always double check. Compare the market to make sure you're on the right rate. For example, energy bills. You know how you get lured across by energy retailers with um, a new offer and you think, you beauty, I've got the best rate in the market. Understand that only lasts a maximum of a year. After a year, you automatically revert to the default rate, which is set by the regulator, which isn't as good as the introductory rate. Um, insurance companies always change their risk ratings on where you live or what sort of car you drive or your age. Always check that you've, um, you've got the best insurance policy, never automatically renew. Um, a lot of people, when they're short of cash, and, and Australians at the moment are asset rich and cash poor, cash poor because of higher inflation, higher interest rates, um, wage rises not keeping pace, and, and investment account interest not keeping pace. Um, always look at cutting back costs, um, but check your income side as well. Um, look at moonlighting or having a side hustle um, to earn some extra cash. Uh, work part-time to keep an interest can make a huge difference. Whenever you're buying something, always ask, do I need it? Um, I read a re because I've been in this habit a, a bit as well. Everyone's shopping online more. And you know, there's that button when you're filling in all your details that says auto fill. It's really easy to press that button. All your details are there. All your credit card details are to go and purchase. Um, studies have been done in Harvard to say that if you don't press that button and go back and keep manually filling in the purchase order of online shopping um, manually, something like 50% of the time people won't, um, won't finish it because halfway through they're thinking, oh, can I really afford this? Do I really need it? So it's a really good discipline and uh, a really good study. Um, and the seven, uh, seventh habit that I reckon will change your life is be in control of your money and get good advice and work as a team. If you're in a relationship, work as a team, the two of you. Lib and I every month have a 15 minute monthly wealth check. It's half the time of an episode of Home and Away. It's not a lot to talk about one of the most important things in your life is your financial goals, any stresses you wanna share with each other, I usually supply the glass of red wine. Lib brings the, the cheese and crackers. We sit down and we talk. Usually we plan 15 minutes. We end up talking for half an hour. 
but we finish in a much better place because we built a trust in terms of where we're going financially with each other. It's really important to do that and will reduce any financial stress into the future. So, um, um, Beck, that's a bit of a rundown on why I reckon that you should be taking advantage of good advice and also all of the resources available. Thanks, Koshi. Um, one of the things I'd just like to cover off, um, I actually took some of your advice after one of the seminars uh, that we did in person recently, I rang the energy company. Yep. Saved some money, gave us a $50 credit. So if you haven't done that one yet, it might be something Good to look point. at. It certainly, um, worked, it certainly worked for us. And, and also, on your um, account that comes in, everyone goes to the amount you owe and the date you've got to pay it on. But there's a little panel on the front page that the energy retailer must put there showing whether they have a better plan for your usage and how much you're going to save and who to call to change over. But you've got to yep. swap it over yourself. Yes. So thanks, Koshi. That was really good. So we've covered some great information today. We've talked about various contribution strategies, accessing your super, pension accounts, including TTR, Centrelink benefits and the value of advice. So I hope you've written down some important information to help mm -hmm. you reach your retirement goals. But don't worry if you didn't, because the recording will be emailed to you next week. Remember, it's never too early to start to plan for your retirement. Okay. Questions are starting to come in, Beck. Right. Um, first one here from Lisa. Lisa, thanks for joining us. Good to have you aboard. Uh, when I retire, am I able to take out, uh, take some money to put towards the balance of my mortgage? Um, and th this is a really interesting stat. I read the other day, the, the, you know how our adult children go, go well, gee, it's a lot harder for us these days, and da 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 you're about the same age as my adult children. Um, you don't have a mortgage. Well, something like 30, 35% of retirees, when they tie do still have a mortgage mm. in our home loan. So, Lisa, your question is really relevant. Exactly. And the information I'm going to give you today is just general yep. in nature and doesn't take into account anyone's personal circumstances, needs or objectives. So it really is a personal question as to whether this would be right for you to actually take the money out of your super and pay off your mortgage. I can't stress enough when you're trying to make these decisions about what's right, should I pay off my mortgage, should I buy, uh, should I buy that caravan or boat or whatever it is that you might be doing at those important times to get some personal advice mm. uh, around that to make sure is that the right option yeah. for you. And, and also where, where that money's going into. Mm. Like if, it, if it's going into a house, that's an appreciating asset. Um, into, a, into a boat or um, or a holiday, well, a boat's a depreciating asset, uh, and a holiday is memories, which are really powerful, and that's mm. what life's all about. Yep. But you just got, you just got to balance that up, don't you? Yeah. And um, understand that, you know, money in your super will keep keep growing, and um, in terms of, of history, says that it keeps going and, and does pretty well. So, yeah. uh, the opportunity cost of that. Yeah. So, Lisa, I'd advise. We have advice services that can actually help you with that question. If you're wanting to do that one-off, you know, expense of or drawdown, how would that yeah. impact your future lifestyle? How long is your money going to, la to last uh, throughout your life? Is it going to last you? Um, we can answer those questions for you yeah. through, through our personal advice services. So I'd really recommend at the end when it gets to the survey piece, fill in your details, Lisa, and uh, we can mm. have one of our advisors talk to you. Uh, I had some great advice. This is years and years ago. Everyone kept saying, oh, Koshi, what shall we do with our money? And my first question is always, what do you want your money to do for you? And that, that's part of um, sitting down on a monthly basis with your partner and working out what you might want your money to do for you in the future, is it? And, and that can make life a whole lot simpler if you understand that. Yep. All right, next question. Uh, NS says, if I consolidate... Uh, but multiple supers into brighter super. How does this impact the reward I might get in moving to a pension account? Yes, so great question. Uh, I would probably, so the money has to sit in your accumulation account and it depends then on how it's invested, like what growth assets is your money invested in? 
because the growth assets, when they're sold, they're the things that um, we release uh, the tax in regards to. So I'd recommend jumping on the website. We've got a really good uh, frequently asked questions. So if you're just in the little search field on brightersuper.com.au, type in retirement reward. It's going to give you some great frequently asked questions and it's also going to give you an examples of how it's calculated. Okay. All right. Um, another question, how do I prepare to go and talk to an advisor. You keep saying, um, yes, you've got advice facilities available and mm -hmm. your health checks, but also uh, the one-on-one face-to-face advice. Um, how do you prepare for that to get the most out of it? So I think uh, what you need to think about is um, what budget am I looking at? So, so making sure you've got a, a really good, well-rounded well budget. How much is it costing you to live at the moment? So even using the ASFA detailed uh, budget breakdown, if you went onto the ASFA retirement uh, website, they'll be able to, you can look at their budget if you haven't started one yet, and it'll give you some really good ideas on what you should be considering for your retirement. So having a great budget. Uh, thinking about what your um, objectives are for your retirement. What are you planning on doing? Do you want to go on that overseas holiday? Do you have a, a purchase that you want to do of a car and caravan? You know, what are those big ticket items that you're looking to buy uh, as you move into retirement? So having those sort of ideas in your mind, uh, as well as when do I want to retire? So what age might I be placing on this? And it's not just you, it's your, your family and your spouse, if you have one as well, that you need to consider with this. So having those ideas in place uh, and having a real good think, maybe sitting down with your other, other half and having a glass of wine or having a cup of tea or a coffee. A wine's not compulsory, and, no, it's not just compulsory. living life. <laughs> whatever, whatever beverage of your choice that you might like to have. Um, and having uh, that conversation, that real conversation around what you both want in retirement, because interesting enough, everyone's different and it actually may be different between yep. spouses as well. So having those sort of, um, having that thought process in place and having those, uh, yep. Great those questions. Yep. Um, Grant says, Beck, um, with the downsizing um, tip, Yep. Grant, caught, caught your attention as well. Uh, can the $600,000 for a couple be paid into one super account or do you place the $300,000 into individual accounts? So it's individual accounts. Right. Okay. Uh, if you're a um, customer uh, of Ergon Retail in yep. regional Queensland, mm -hmm. um, you cannot change retailers. Oh, for energy oh, retail. Oh, for energy retail. Oh, because you've only got the one option. Thank okay. you for Thank you letting for us know that. <laughs> uh, Russell says, I have both SMSF, which I then use Brighter Super as my main investment strategy. That's a really, really good tip, Russell. Uh, my SMSF owns a property greatly appreciated in value, which I want to sell. I turn 60 later this year. If I establish a TTR fund, is the proceeds of, the, of this sale able to be deposited to minimise capital gains tax? Who is this from? Uh, this is from Russell. Russell, you need some personal advice. Right. Uh, to, in short, because there's quite a few moving parts there to that. And uh, you need to get some advice to, to know is what's right for you. And that advice could come obviously from a financial advisor as well as your tax accountant. So I'd be recommending you have those conversations. Okay. Peter says, why is the brightest super property asset class going down so significantly this year when the cost of materials and labour are rising significantly. Um, uh, Peter, um, uh, cost of materials and labour uh, going into the value of, say, a shopping centre or an office block really doesn't affect its valuation, does it? Mm. It's all about supply and demand in the market. Yep. And commercial property, um, if you talk to the experts, I talk to the experts all the time in property, um, is that commercial property has been going down in value because of um, a lot of businesses um, allowing work from home. So they don't need the space yes. in the commercial property. So that's one of the big reasons. Yeah, I'd be um, giving us a call on that one, Peter, and we can talk a little bit further about that. So I think we're um, nearly out of time for questions. Koshi? Oh, one more? Okay, one more uh, only, an e only if it's an easy one. Okay, all right. <laughs> Uh, Nikki, you've got you've got a fairly hard one here. I reckon. It's an easy one. Um, 
Uh, Nikki's one on. Oh. Um, yeah, yeah. She's budgeting for retirement and things like that. So that uh, Nikki, I reckon you should get in contact with Bryder and have a super health check on that. Uh, Mark says, um, do you have advice on when number of years leading up to retirement you should look to lower the risk profile? on superannuation investment choices and options. Yep, so I think um, something to think about in regards to that is remembering that even when you retire, you're still potentially invested in super. So we tend to continue to live on well into our 80s and 90s these days. So you've got to think about not just now, but um, your money also or your super still growing uh, when you're retired because you're starting to draw down on it. Um, my, what I would advise you to do is give us a call or in the feedback form, um, we can um, give you some advice through our intra-fund advice team, which is at no additional cost to our members, and they can talk to you about your own risk profile and should you look to change that or is it satisfactory for, for uh, your risk profile? Yep. Yep. Good advice. Wow. Thanks for your questions uh, and your time this evening. I really appreciated doing that and thank you for asking them. It's appreciated. Uh, remember to download our reference guide. You can find this under the handouts tab on the right hand side of the webinar page. Uh, we would also appreciate your feedback on tonight's webinar and a survey will pop up about 30 seconds after the webinar has concluded. So hang around for that. If you want to be contacted, you'll have the opportunity to leave your details in this feedback form. So before concluding, I just want to remind you that our fund is open to everyone. Brighter Super has a proud history of serving members in local government, energy and electrical sectors and now the financial services sector. As an open fund, we welcome members from many other sectors and the wider community. To learn how your spouse, friends or broader family can join, go to our website brightersuper.com.au. We also encourage you to follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook and Instagram for the latest updates, uh, news, webinars and all things super. We'd also appreciate if you could leave us a Google review or a product review. So please simply scan the QR code you can see on your screen. These reviews do assist us with our brand recognition and customer service. So we would greatly appreciate your feedback. Now that draws a close to our webinar this evening. I do hope this presentation was beneficial to you as you plan for your retirement. A copy of tonight's webinar recording will be sent to you in the coming weeks or week. And thanks again for attending and have a terrific night.